This Final Cut Pro 10 tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaForge Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. Thank you. Hola, Barcelona. And that's it. That's all I'm going to give you. Uh, I lived in California for quite some time, and they used to always say, you live in California now, speak Spanish. Um, but I never got that far. Well, I'm first off very excited to see so many people here. That's very, very cool. OK, hold on just two seconds. Uh, there we go. There you go. All right. My name is Robin Kurz. I'm primarily an editor, but I'm also a Apple certified trainer and so-called ace, which is a Adobe certified expert in something. I don't know. And I also run a uh, internet portal, postprofessionals.de, because I happen to be an American living in Germany, and I have uh, comprehensive training in German. So if anybody wants to learn Final Cut and German, hey, I'm, I'm the guy. <laughs> Yes, and that was the wrong transition, but oh well, I'll take it. Um, I'm here to talk about motion, basically because hardly anybody ever does, and that's too bad, because uh, I'm a big, big fan of motion. I actually started with After Effects myself in 90-something or other, I think three or four, so even before it belonged to Adobe, so I know it very, very well, and I actually even worked for Adobe using uh, doing uh, After Effects demos and stuff. And then around 2000, I believe, Motion came out, and I was pretty much uh, taken aback at its performance, its abilities, and everything, and then its integration with Final Cut, because Final Cut, on the other hand, was my NLE of choice. So I got into it more and more, and I hope to be doing a, a uh, German language motion training on that also very soon. It's been, I've been planning it for ages. Um, so yeah, basically I just wanted to hear, I saw that there's a lot of Final Cut users here, which is obviously very cool. Uh, how many motion users do we have? I actually split this up in two, in two things. Who bought motion? Let's put it that way. <laughs> who bought motion? Oh, okay, there's a few. Okay, because who uses motion? That's two different things, right? Um, yeah, Motion was always, I mean, with Final Cut Studio, it was like that app that, that was on, on your disk, and you went, oh, hi, and open it up, usually screamed loudly and shut it back down again, because you're like, I don't know what this is all about. Um, and it looks very frightening at, at, at first, but as with Final Cut, um, just, you know, a little practice, and you're, and you're good. So who uses After Effects? Oh, okay. Now, see, hmm. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge After Effects fan. It's one of the best compositing uh, apps and, and, uh, there are. Of course, I always have, uh, ironically, one of the first questions I get when people know that, uh, f find out that I, that I use both uh, is, which should I get? Should I get Motion or After Effects? And I just go, that's the wrong question. The question is, what do you need to do? Uh, there's oftentimes this, this perception, well, After Effects is the app to have when it's, you know, when you're doing graf motion graphics or some compositing or maybe some visual effects and stuff. And it most definitely is. And it has its huge strengths and it has its weaknesses, just as it is the other way around with, with motion. A motion, first and foremost, is extremely fast. It has a real-time engine. And I would like to say that about 80% of the things I know people do with After Effects, they could just as well do with motion. Um, only much faster. And if you're using Premiere, obviously After Effects is going to be your choice. There's absolutely no problem with that. If you're using Final Cut, honestly, I don't know why you're not using Motion. Especially if you already know your way around After Effects, it shouldn't be that hard. So the question is, Apple Motion, why? Like I said, first of all, the, the Final Cut integration. Even though I know a lot of people are making different claims, the integration with Final Cut is deeper than After Effects is with Premiere. A lot of people say, well, you can't send from the timeline. But aside from that, it is much, much deeper. Um, I always call Motion Final Cut's developer uh, uh, app or de developer environment because it's a huge support for, for Final Cut. The feature set 
Um, there's a lot of things After Effects doesn't have, again, just as it is the other way around. So it could probably make a lot of sense for people that do a lot of gra motion graphics titling, uh, the, you know, that kind of work, uh, to take a look at it, and if they're doing it with After Effects, if maybe, you know, those things that they're doing the most, um, if motion can't A, do them, and B, maybe do them better, or maybe even do them faster, at least faster is, is a good thing, right? There's also a huge ecosystem. Whoever's not familiar with them, FX Factory and Motion VFX and free. There's massive amounts of free effects, free uh, transitions, free titles, and uh, so forth. FX Factory, I hope to get to that real quick. And Motion VFX, uh, Simon, good friend of mine, they do brilliant work. They do amazing uh, plugins. And like I said, the free part is, of course, uh, not so bad. Uh, because basically I can build transitions, effects, and generators, and titles, and whatever in motion, and whoever has Final Cut can use them as such. Speed. It's just very, very fast. Obviously, the real-time engine is always limited to um, the abilities of your computer. If you're using an LC3 from 1984, you're <laughs> probably not going to get very far. But um, Final Cut and, and motion both are very gpu intensive, meaning you need a great uh, graphics card. So obviously a Mac Mini is not, is going to hit the ceiling of real-time sooner than this wonderful machine over here, the, the Mac Pro. Possibly the more, most important reason, money, right? What about the price? I don't know, does everybody, anybody know that Motion in fact costs $49 or 49 euros? I don't know, what is it in Spain? Is it that also in Spain? Yeah, okay. So it's 49 euros in Spain. Um, just as a little comparison, Motion 49 euros, that works out since the day it came out. June 2011, to this day, I would be paying 3 cents a day or 90 cents a month. And obviously that's going to be going down over time, right? After Effects CC, if I'd bought that on the very first day, I would have paid as a single license, mind you. This is not the suite, um, 820 to date. And obviously that's going to be going up over time. So. The licensing model also, I don't know how many people, I personally am not a huge fan at all of the subscription model because I feel like I'm renting my own work, right? Because, I mean, the day I decide to maybe switch to something else or I run out of money, I don't know, my work is gone. I can't access it anymore. And I think the fewest people think about that. Okay, let's get to the real thing. Obviously, I'm not going to make you a motion editor today. What I just want to do is give you a very, very, very rough look at what you can do with motion and maybe inspire you, like I said, to take a quick look at it. For example, in terms of rotoscoping, if ever, anybody ever has to do some excessive masking, this, I happen to have this with me, so I thought I'd pop it up. This is a, a shot I did for a commercial that I edited. It's uncorrected, that's why it's in really crappy colors. But, um, and basically, you can't really tell, but it's running backwards, so the cars in the back are going backwards and has a little bit of a retime, and we couldn't have them going backwards because, uh, so I had to go in and basically stop all the cars. So now if I look at it, the cars are gone. How did I do it? Well, pretty simple, it's called rotoscoping, and this basically just consists of various little masks. In fact, as far as masks are concerned, what I love about motion, it has so-called so beast blinds. So B splines are not your, your typical Bezier curve. These are like uh, B splines. They make for very, very organic masks. And um, I can go in here and just uh, change the tension of the mask to make either a corner or a very uh, loose curve. So that's something I really like about motion. And so basically, if you look at this, uh, that's the mask. So uh, all the cards have disappeared. It's a very very rough. Fortunately, there wasn't too much detail in there, but let me just tell you, this is unrendered, and this is 4K, okay? So, um, and as you can see, even if I go in here while it's uh, playing, while it's playing, I can sit here and change and fiddle, and in that case, even animate the, uh, the masks. There's no rendering, there's no stopping, and if you go look up here, well, okay, we're not quite at the 25 it should be, but it's at 19, so we're near, near real time. 4K, a lot of mass. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so just to that, I won't save that, not that I ever need it again. Let me just show you really, really quick. This is something I just whipped up for the fun of it. Um, 
using all just uh, motion components. I know I'll be winning major design awards, <laughs> so remember my name. Um, okay, so this is basically what I just wanted to show with this. If I do another little out point and just... Okay, what we have here is just these three little deals going, the thing in the back, and then we have the thing. Let me point out, this does not have, if I go into the keyframes, there's not a single keyframe in this, okay? Not one. So how do I do it? What uh, motion has, if, uh, if you've never dealt with it, is so-called behaviors. Behaviors do exactly that. They teach an object a certain behavior. It could be its relationship to another object or whatnot. So people that are very deep into After Effects will know this as expressions. And these are kind of like little expression containers, if you will. So I just want to show you real quick, believe it or not, I can do this very quickly and just give you an idea of, of what I did. I'm just going to get new. And here you already see that we've got the Final Cut effect, generator, transition, and titles. So depending on what I select, when, as soon as I save it, if it's not just a regular motion project, a motion project I save like any other document onto my desktop, into my folder, or whatever. Anything else, the effect, the generator, the transition, automatically saves itself to Final Cut into that browser. Okay, So it's immediately accessible for me as soon as I'm finished. I'm going to make that a title. I'm going to go crazy here. I'm going to do HD. Uh, 10 seconds, that's good enough, and I'll just say open, zoom back, and do a little shift Z. Okay, so now the standard two objects here are the title background, and this is like just a standard title, and I could start typing, and there we go. But I'm going to kill it because I don't need it. Get rid of that for now. Um, up here in my objects, you'll see I, ca I have cameras, I have lights, I have everything, I have drop zones. I'll hit a drop zone. Who doesn't know what a drop zone is? Okay. If you've worked in Final Cut, you'll see some of those filters and they have this little thing and you drop it on there and it's this arrow and all this. I can make my own drop zone. So this is basically a placeholder for material I can put in later, so it's exchangeable at, in, at, at any time. Uh, so if I'm basically just doing like a, a, a say, you know, corporate something and I can always exchange be the logo or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna hit F1 and just scale this down to say about 75%. There we go, and then I'm going to go down here, just grab a little rectangle from the rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag this out, so just roughly around there, position it, and what I love about, well, if it's on at least, there we go. I love about motion, it always has these nice little guides. So we have uh, a bunch of little guides, so I know exactly that I'm in the middle here. Go over here to the mask, go to the shape, and I'll even go to, where is it, geometry, and uh, do the roundness. So I'll get rid of those corners a little bit. Um, what's so exciting about that? Well, I'm going to take the drop zone, and I'm going to say, yeah, let's give you, where is it, an image mask. And the image mask is this little rectangle, so I'm just going to drop it on there. And boom, I have my, my first drop zone. OK, so what do I do now? I'm talking about b behaviors. If I don't want to mm, futz with a bunch of keyframes, because that can get messy depending on what I'm doing. Uh, it's always a good idea to wonder, hmm, can I do it with a behavior because they're easier to deal with. So I'll just select a group, I'll go to behaviors, and I'll say basic motion, and here I have motion path. If I play it, then it just starts taking off. So what is it doing? It's just kind of going off uh, screen, not what I want. And it's doing it over the entire length of the project. So it's going to be a lot shorter. I'm going to switch this to time code and say I want it to happen in about one second. I'll move here to one second. Oh, okay, so now it's doing it much quicker. Of course, obviously in the wrong direction. And the fun thing is, if I put this and just shoot this out, while it's playing, I actually change the uh, position. It'll constantly loop on. Like I said, this is the, the real-time uh, effect. Um, okay, I'm going to zoom back real quick and go over here. And I want it to come up we go. Okay. I'm always, always immediately seeing, and I actually took the wrong one. Okay, so we're just going to re reverse that. Sorry. Put that in the middle. Back in the middle. That back up. Go to the beginning. There we go. Okay. So now it's coming down. Simple enough. Not a single keyframe. Now, the nice thing about this is, like I said, this is the path. So if I wanted to go slower, I just make it longer, and it extends the time. I don't have to futz with any keyframes. Of course, the, the movement is kind of nasty, so it's just going clonk down. So I can go over here to the motion path and say that the speed ease both. So it kind of comes down in a, in a nicer speed. Okay, so that's my first guy. 
what am I going to do now? I can just go in here, and you saw I had three of those. I'll just hit the Alt key and pull this over here. Funny enough, I have a copy in there, but he's taken the wrong mask, so I would just pull the right mask on there. Then we have the second one as I need it. Then I can take this, hold the Alt key, pull it over. I have the third one, and I just have to correct the mask here. And then I have all three of these guys. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Take these three and move them over a little bit. Take this guy, oops, sorry. Take him, move him right there. Select all three of them, go to the align and distribute horizontal centers. There we go. Okay, so I have these three. Obviously, I don't want them all coming down at the same time, so all I do is uh, even close my timeline if I want to. Hit Shift Z for this, and then go in here, because I, down here I have the mini timeline, as it's called. If you look down, down here, as soon as I have anything selected, I see just that object. So if I go over here, I see where it's, it's positioned in in the uh, timeline. So the first one is way over there. That's going to come down first. This one is going to come down second. So I'm just going to pull it down by like 13 frames and do this one by like 26. Whoops, which is 101. There we go. And that would just be like the rough animation. Let's go in the library. Just go down here to the content, backgrounds. And let's switch over here. And I have my fun little sunset style, whatever that is. Where is it? Here it is. Take that and just slap it in the background. There we go. And then we just F1. These are a little older. That's when they never scale quite right. And just scale it right up. And like I said, I'm not stopping playback at any point. We are doing the 25 frames at all, at all times. So now I'm a little animated background, right? I'm going to pull these out just a little bit. I'm going to put this one in the front. Let's see. Go over the position. And we have a Z position, so I can just move this up by like 50 pixels. Um, take the second one. So now it's actually, I'll actually stop it for one second. I can hit the Q key, and then I have little uh, 3D uh, controls here if I want. And I have little, I can pull this forward and backward. And I can move this one a little bit forward. So it's in front of that and this one a little back. Now, oddly enough, they're not actually behind each other and because we're still in 2D mode. So if I add a camera, he'll ask me, do you want to switch to 3D? I do that, and then they pop into the actual depth mode because if I go into my camera, I can see, aha, there they are. Okay, so I can go in here and then just fine tune that. If I wanted to, um, just go like that. Like I'm just gonna do the fast version. I also have the possibility of going into perspective mode, meaning I can look what everyone in my set is doing, including my camera. Whoops, let me take this. And there I see my little camera looking at my scene. And what's nice if I'm here, for example, and that's something I always miss in After Effects, is if I start moving this around, look what you get. At the bottom right, you're getting a little preview of the camera. So I'm not only seeing how I'm moving it in the scene, but it's telling me, like, and I've done that so many times, I'm like, okay, just go just a little bit, too far, damn it, and then you go back like that, okay? So that's a really cool little feature that I like. Uh, Command Z, okay. Now we're back into the actual camera. Uh, I'm not gonna do the full thing here, just for time's sake. Another thing I can do real quick is, oh, I'm sorry, here's the object. Put in a little light, kaboosh. Oh, look at that, I got me a light. And I can position this light in 3D space. I'll just go over here. This is the, oops, where's the HUD? This is the HUD. This always gives, gives me like the most important information over my uh, object. I'll turn off the fall off. Whoops, turn the fall off off. That way I don't uh, move it back a little bit. And we'll turn on shadows. And boom, there we go. Move it over a little bit like that. So I get like a perspective shadow. That's nice. Then go over here to shadows and soften them up. Soften them way up. There we go. Okay, so now we have our little perspective. Whoops. Eh. Command Z, our little perspective shadow. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so I could then just go in here, uh, take hit T for my t uh, text tool. As I'm working here, I just to click in there and I say, uh, my, whoops, trip to Barcelona. Am I even typing? <laughs> 
There we are. Uh, <laughs> it's behind everything. <laughs> That's the problem when you're working in 3D space, okay? So it's like it hid behind my, my background. Okay, so that's one of those little gotchas. Okay, I'm being very sloppy here. I should actually have made a new group for it. There we go. Uh, now text my trip to Barcelona. And it's still behind. We'll escape out of that and move it up. Okay, you get the idea. Huh? I'm gonna go into perspective mode and see where he's hiding. He's hiding right there. Okay, so now I can see as long as he's here and back here. Then I'm good. Okay. Right up. Okay, so we have him. What's really cool, I can just give that another behavior, which is a by the way, just on a side, you have it's like simulations, gravity, orbit around, et cetera, et cetera. If you need some really elaborate, organic types of uh, animation, like orbit around, if you were doing like a planet animation, you could literally just say, okay, take this circle, this picture of one planet, and, and just orbit around my sun picture. Okay, my earth picture, please orbit around my sun picture, and then at a certain speed, and et cetera, et cetera. You can do things bump each other off, so it's stuff that you can't actually do with keyframes. <laughs> well, I at least I wouldn't try. Um, and for text, I have various. I have like a bazillion. If we go in here real quick into the library and into, uh, where is it, my behaviors. Then I have text animation behaviors. If you select these, text sequence, energetic, for example, and just look at these. These are the types of, I get a little preview up here of the different types of animation that I can simply apply to my text and it animates that way. I'll just go over here. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Sequence text, throw that on there. Say I don't want it to, whoopsie, don't want it to happen longer than this. Set that to out. And then once I have the sequence text applied to my text, anything to I that I do to it now turns into an animation. And I have just the single letters, and I just say, you know what, start up here. And then he starts up there and everybody follows. It just sequences through the whole thing. I can go in here and say, you know, start up there and be turned. Of course, now it's a little too, too fast for you to see it, but if you look closely, you'll see that they come turned in. So that's a very quick way of just doing my own type of animation. And I can just go over to uh, F4, to the behaviors, and I can do the spread so that more Letters come down at a time. I can randomize them. I can do this seed offset, et cetera, et cetera. And to just speed it up, I just shorten it all up. And there you go. I have a very quick and easy type animation. Oh, one more thing. One tiny last thing. I go into camera, and I'll put in a little sweep onto the camera. And what that does is kind of slightly sweep my camera across uh, the whole scene, if we look at it come back a little bit, and then you'll see it's just sweeping my camera automatically. I don't even have to do it. I'll just slowly just move it to a certain degree. So we'll just leave it like this. I'm just showing you uh, the principle of the matter. And I'll just hit Command S. There you go. Now it asks me, well, how, what would you like to call it? I'll call it triple drop. There we go. And ask me, where do I want to put it? I'll put it in a new category and, new, and call it FCP X Tour and create the category because you might know that in Final Cut you have categories and you have subcategories, et cetera, and themes. So if I'm doing something for a client and I'm doing a title, I'm doing a, an effect, I'm doing a transition that are all CI conform, I can put them all into one theme, theme so I can see everything I have for a certain, be it a client or a certain project. I'll see all, you know, everything put together. I'll just put that into another theme and use it in that theme tour just so you can see it. Say OK hit publish, and that's it. I just hide this, go into Final Cut. Here we go. FCP in action is great, but I'm gonna go in here and just open this, and we'll just go in here. Uh, okay, so, and as you can see right here, I've got my FCPX tour, and here's my title. And the thing is, zero rendering, nothing, real time. This thing plays the exact same speed as in uh, they both share the same engine. So anything, you know, if I went in there, of course, if I started doing motion blur and I started doing depth of field and all that kind of particles, 
uh, replicators, there's just a bunch of really, really, really cool stuff in there, then the real time is going to suffer. But we'll just take this, hit Q, put it in there, and have my little uh, drop zones. So go into my material. Let's see, I'll go in here, GoPro. And I can actually just take this and drop it on there. Go back here, and already I have the first uh, piece of material just right in there, all in real time. Okay, I just exchange it over here. Now the thing is, there's two drop zones missing because I copied the drop zones. Normally, if I add as many drop zones, they automatically get published. Let me show you that just real quick. Oh, another thing is, you're not stuck with how they're uh, how they're in here. I can just do a double click and look at this. I can actually move them here too. It's not like I have to go in and change my drop zone. I can just go in here and say, hey, there's that's the helicopter down there. So please go from there, and there we go. Okay, so it's extremely flexible on top of it. Okay, so this didn't work out right, so I'm going to go back in here, do a right click. Oh, and that's <laughs> completely forgot to even mention this. I'm uh, sorry to say. Everything you see in Final Cut, except for very, very few uh, other, uh, basic stuff, is a motion project, okay? Uh, and third party stuff is in the motion project. If you do a right click on pretty much anything, a title or generator or whatever, you'll always see open a copy in motion. That means I can always edit it at any time. It's a copy is made and I can edit it. In this case, I'll just go here, open in motion. Since it's mine, it doesn't have to do a copy. And I'll just go in here, look for the drop zones, and go over here, and I'll just say publish. And I'll go over here, and I'll just say publish. And over here, and say, oh, it's already published. That was the first one. Say save. Go back to Final Cut, go back to my little thing. I have to replace it because the instance in the timeline is going here, and there I have my three, three drop zones at the top, okay? Then I can start doing rigs, okay? That's a whole other story. I'm, there's not enough time for that, unfortunately, but uh, let me just show you one or two last little things. Like I said, the flexibility and the integration is amazing. I mean, After Effects and Premiere also, not like this. <laughs> no, not like this, okay? Um, sorry to say, I, like I said, I love After Effects. Two last things, third party, just real quick. Um, I have like callouts, for example, from the gentleman at Motion VFX. I don't know if anybody's uh, familiar with these guys. Uh, they just brought this out. This is their second uh, plugin of this sort. Uh, this has a built-in tracker, so I can, for example, if you look at this title down here, minimalism, that's a wonderful word then disappears again. That's nothing terribly exciting, but if you look here, that's a little track point. So if I get on this and I take this little track point and set it, say, for example, onto this bike, and I'll say from the middle, just track that, it has a built-in tracker and is now tracking this title on to the back end of the bike, as you can see. So this is something I don't even have to go to motion for. I could, because motion have a, has a point tracker but it's built into the title. It'll only be from the middle. Just showing it real quick. So this is pretty amazing. It'll be there, and then at this point, it'll start tracking in onto the bike and then disappear that way, okay? And this is a huge set of very, very nice uh, titles, as you can see. I love these guys. Um, and like I said, they have an amazing amount of, of templates and whatnot that you can take a, take a look at. Couldn't show you <laughs> XN Motion. That's where you can send things from the timeline, clips and entire sequences if you want to, over to Motion, do the work there, send it back. That's the only thing that or Final Cut 10 doesn't have that, for example, Final Cut Z used to have that you could just send single clips over to Motion and whatnot. Okay, that's almost it. I hope I didn't forget anything. One last thing. Thank you to Jesus and Ronnie. I have to say that because you guys have done an amazing job. You have really, really, they've, they've been going crazy, understandably. Have, do this for almost, you know, just out of idealism, not getting major amounts of money or anything. They just do it because they love to do it. And you guys, I'd love to give them a big round of applause <laughs> and a thank you. Thank you.